going to paint this picture in Art Rage 5. Hi everyone, Steve Elliott here. Today I am working in Art Rage 5 on the iPad. Now, I've probably had Art Rage on the iPad longer than any other painting app that I've ever used. And when I first got it, I had the original iPad and I used it a lot. I really liked it. But once I got serious about painting, I used it less and less and less. And the reason for that is I couldn't get pictures, or I couldn't create a canvas big enough for the pictures that I wanted to paint. So there is a restriction on the size of the canvas you can, can have in Art Rage. And also, um, when I did make a large canvas, the brushes were so small that I couldn't get a, um, a, a real realistic looking paint stroke. Like here, I'm, you can see I'm squirting the tubes of paint onto the canvas and I'm obviously going to use a palette knife to smooth them out in a minute. And I couldn't do that on the size that I wanted. So that's why I have steered away from using Art Rage on the iPad. I use it on the PC quite a lot, but not on the iPad. And, and that's a shame because obviously uh, on the iPad, I can use it like a, a, a proper medium. I'm not using a Wacom um, Intuos Pro where I'm sort of looking at the screen but working on the tablet. I can actually... Uh, in a more realistic way. So why am I doing it now? Why am I now using Art Rage on the iPad? Well, there's a feature in Art Rage called Record Script. And I've sort of looked at it, but never really used it. And I thought, I wonder if you can record a script which pretty much records every brush stroke you make and then you can play it back. You can uh, create a new file and play it back and reproduce that same painting. So I thought, I wonder if I could do that uh, on the PC, uh, record it on the iPad and play it back on the PC to a larger scale. So I'm not going to tell you if it worked. You Stay to the end of the video because at the end of the video, I will reveal if this actually worked or not because what I did I set up an A4 image on the iPad which I suppose at 300 dpi which I suppose in some cases that's okay but I work on a lot bigger uh, formats than that usually I'm wanting to print out 36 inches by 24 so uh, that's nothing nowhere near big enough so anyway um, this is an A4 painting on the iPad Pro in Art Rage 5. So I used the, and I've never really used the palette knife before, and I've not used the tubes of paint, so I'm sort of in new ground here, messing around, and I did find that um, the palette knife, I was expecting to get hard edges with it, and I they, they were all a little bit soft. It, it's more of a sort of a blending tool, really, which was a bit disappointed at first, but I did discover later on, if you up the loading on the palette knife, you can then start to paint with it, and then you do get harder edges. But this I um, began with a sketch that I'd already done uh, in um, Paper by 53. So I'll put a link to that in the comments. So if you want to have a look at uh, the the original drawing that inspired me to do this painting, and um, I imported that in, and I used that as a background image instead of re-sketching again. I thought it's pointless me doing the same sketch again. I'll just import that in, scale it to fit, and then I started painting um, using that as my outline drawing, and then I turned it off and uh, because it was obviously covered with paint and as you can see i'm getting really nice thick paint which i've been wanting to do for a while i suppose this is sort of similar to what you can do in um corel painter 
but obviously in Art Rage, and I, I really like it. I wanted this painting to be all about the light, um, encompassing the, the gentleman walking into the coffee house. This is actually the Boston Tea Party in Birmingham. And uh, I've called this painting, um, Give Me a Cup of Coffee in a Zero Waste Cup. Because the actual coffee house encourages us. Uh, it's all about sort of being environmental friendly. And you can buy, purchase a cup off them where you can bring it in every day uh, and use the same cup over and over again instead of wasting, which I thought was a great idea because I'm all into that kind of thing. So I got this guy coming in asking for his cup of coffee in a zero waste cup. So uh, is this is all about thick bold paint splashed on it's not splashed on it's sort of knifed on um muted colors i've i've gone for a muted palette rather than the vibrant colors that uh i i tend to use a lot i'm sort of in my muted phase at the minute and uh enjoying working with um softer less vibrant colors you'll probably realise that that bench that I'm working on now, the perspective isn't right. It's sort of um, tilting. So I do fix that uh, shortly. Uh, it was irrit it irritated me in the original drawing, so I don't know why I didn't fix it straight away. But um, it does get fixed. So I'm using... I made a palette before I begin... Uh, before I go painting uh, the way I always do and I selected some greys pretty much sort of brown greys and blue greys so I'm kind of working in a discordant colour scheme where I am reversing the tonal order of colour and what I've done what I mean by that is I I've taken the blues there's predominantly I suppose a blue and yellow painting where blue would be in reality the darkest colour and yellow is the lightest colour well I've reversed that tonal order and I've made the blue the lightest colour and the yellow the darkest colour so this is called a discordant scheme um, I didn't really intentionally intend to do that but uh, looking at it now that, that's clearly what it is uh, I just thought I'd share that bit of uh, info with you that takes me back to when I was a painter and decorator I've had so many jobs you probably watch my videos and thinking I don't know you said you was a sign writer you said you was a printer you said you was a sign maker you said you was a teacher now you're a painter and decorator yeah I've done all of those jobs I've had a lot of jobs in my lifetime and uh, I've retrained a lot of times and um, done different things. So um, one of one of those times, I was a painter and decorator and did study colour theory. So that's where I got my colour theory from, not from painting uh, or art school or anything like that, but as a painter and decorator and learning about colours, how you can make a room look bigger and uh, make a long, thin room look as though the proportions are more evenly spaced out and, and that kind of thing. Uh, so sort of an odd way, I suppose, for a, a painter to come about is colour theory. So have, have you noticed I have um, fixed the bench and the perspective on that now to something more appropriate? This painting, as you can see, is not about detail i know i don't put a lot of detail in paintings but this one has got even less i'm going more towards the abstract abstract it seems every time i paint something i only used two brushes in this i used the palette knife and i think it was the sharp edge palette knife and i adjusted the um loading of the paint on that and then i used the square head oil brush and I don't think I changed the settings on that at all once apart from the size of the brush and I wanted it to be about shadows and light more so than 
about form and uh, detail. And I wanted the guy in the painting to be almost of an halo of light around him that diffused his body and put uh, it almost uh, blurred. So I didn't paint any hard edges. I uh, used the palette knife to drag the white paint over his form to uh, give that uh, sense of diffused light around him. And I put a little bit of red into his uh, clothes just to sort of make him a, a bit more dominant in the painting, really. So he started off, I suppose, with sort of quite defined shapes around the doorway and the windows and and the um, desk or the counter, I should say. Uh, and I sort of used the light to soften them off as I was going. So this becomes a very diffuse painting. I do like it a lot. It didn't take me very long. I probably finished it within two hours or so. So um, I was pleased with the outcome. But what I really wanted to do, I wanted to find out if I could enlarge this painting by running the script on the PC version of Art Rage 5 to see if I could get a bigger image. So let's see if that works. So here we are. I'm now running the script. I've created um, a piece of uh, canvas, A3 size, and I up the scale of this script to 141%, which would transform my original painting from an A4 to an A3 size. So I didn't go crazy. And look, it absolutely works. It worked. I was so impressed that I could uh, do that with the painting. And this means I can take my new higher res image and upload that to Redbubble and any other website where I want to sell my products. So I will leave a link below to where you could possibly purchase this as a print. So thanks a lot for staying with me to the end. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. It always helps and I appreciate it a lot. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing because I have lots more videos like this and I would love to be sharing them with you. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.